Okay, so what I've got here is a list of around 800 emails that I need to send off. So normally it would take, let's say two nights to send, maybe possibly even three nights. Running function, send emails, and that's it, it's working. So yes, I have learned to code, but does that mean I'm a programmer? Does that mean I can create softwares? Does that mean I'm a computer scientist? No, not necessarily. I guess there's a misconception which I held myself that, you know, as soon as I learn to code, it means that I'm a, you know, software developer, but I'm not. I'm doing this because I guess it's fun. It's interesting. You get to learn something new and it provides opportunities and, and I think that's the best part of all of it, opportunities. When you can learn something new which can open up doors for you, um, I think that is one of the most exciting times in your life because you don't know what's going to come, but what is going to come will most likely be good. Okay, let me put it this way. Imagine you've got a task and you have to spend two hours every week. That is 104 hours in the year. Imagine I spent that four hours learning to code. Uh, I would rather do that, be able to automate this task and then never have to do it again, just check up on it. That's 104 hours of my time, which I've now got back. And I guess if you're into this, you know, self-help sort of culture, um, you've probably read the four hour work week where Tim Ferriss discusses, you know, the, the, the new rich and he talks about how essentially what we want is to buy back our time because there's ways in which we can automate and there's ways in which we can structure our, our hours in the day to be able to have the freedom to, to travel the world or, or as he says, you know, and other things that you can do in your time that you actually love doing, your hobbies. So I've always wanted to learn to code throughout medical school, but I never really had the time and I never really took it seriously, to be honest. But this year with the pandemic and after meeting some extraordinary people, I finally found the time to sit down and get through it. I spent time learning Python, JavaScript and React Native, which took me about a week to get through. And these are languages that have various uses from automating tasks to developing mobile applications. Now I'd say Python is one of the easiest to use and it can handle large data sets. And as a result, it's used for machine learning. And JavaScript is what you need for games, web, or even mobile app development. But React Native, which is one of the hardest ones that I've learned, is created by Facebook and it's based on the React framework. And this one is used to develop apps for iOS and Android. If you are interested in coding, don't shy away from the idea of it. There are plenty of free courses out there which literally walk you through every aspect of it. One of the things that we often think is that it's a linear process and it's something that I personally did think before I started and I thought, you know, I'll watch a video and by the end of the video, I'll understand how to code and I'll be able to produce this, I'll be able to hack this, I'll be able to build this. It's actually, it's not necessarily like that. It's because coding isn't as simple as learning one language and being able to apply all of that into everything you want to build. There's a language for the front end and there's a language for the back end. So you have to learn two different languages. To understand the first language for the front end, you then need to have a basic understanding of another language, which helps you write code in this particular language. Having said all of that, it's still a very oversimplified process. Um, it's a lot more complicated than that. You're going to run into a lot of errors and you're going to have to then find out the solution to these errors. Okay, another misconception I thought was it's only for computer scientists, it's only for computer nerds, it's only for mathematicians, and I am none of them. I mean, I would class myself as a computer nerd. I've built my own computer, I really like tech, I enjoy and understand a lot of the architecture behind technology. I wouldn't say I, I fit the criteria or the stereotype of a typical programmer or a computer scientist. I think the best piece of advice that I got was that Google is your second brain. So the best people are the ones that can Google properly. 
um, or can search on Google very well because they're the ones that will find the answer to every problem that they come across rather than someone who remembers everything but actually I don't know maybe someone that remembers everything is is better than the one that Googles because they don't even come across the problem in the first place but I think of all the forms of leverage, the best one in modern society, it's that we have this idea that in the future, there's going to be these robots. And so every great software developer, for example, now has an army of robots working for him at nighttime while he or she sleeps after they've written the code and it's just cranking away. So the robots army is already here. Now, the quickest way to learn to code is by putting it into practice so yes I can sit and go through as many tutorials as I want but unless I've got an idea or an app that I can work on then it's going to take a very long time to actually learn so to make this more interactive and also to add a bit of continuity on my channel I thought I'd ask you guys to leave a comment down below with any ideas or any apps that you'd like me to build and that way I can film it and also I can share my update with you guys so let me know down below in the comments. Just as I'm about to end the video, I just thought I'd mention, I posted on Reddit about React Native and why is it so difficult. I've just been sort of struggling with this for the past few days, I guess. And um, something that I mentioned was React Native just seems so much more complicated than the other languages. Now I didn't realize it wasn't a language and I got a few people commenting to pull me up on that on the reddit community react native is not a language lmao it's a javascript framework 